Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss balancing redox equations in acidic solutions. Today's essential question, how are re redox equations balanced? Balancing redox reactions. Redox reactions are reactions in which electrons are transferred between reactants. Remember, one reactant is reduced and another one is oxidized. The fundamental principle in balancing redox equations is that the number of electrons lost in an oxidation process must equal the number of electrons gained in the reduction process. So in balancing redox reactions, we're not only looking at the number of atoms, but the number of electrons. Before we move on, I'd like to give you fair warning. Balancing redox reactions is a long and cumbersome process. So let's do this. Here are the steps for balancing redox equations. We'll do a quick overview of each of the steps, and then we'll do a practice problem and go step by step by step by step. So here we go. First, write the unbalanced equation in ionic form, meaning um, any, anything that's aqueous, anything that's an ionic compound, um, in solution, you're going to separate it into its ionic parts. Then, identify and separate the oxidation and reduction processes. Third, balance the atoms in the half reactions. And step three has four parts. First, you're going to balance all of the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. Then, you're going to balance oxygen using water. Then, you're going to balance the hydrogen using hydrogen ions, or H1+. Then, you're going to balance the charges using electrons. All right, step four. Make the number of electrons equal in both of the half reactions. And the last step is to take all the work you've done and put the two half reactions back together to show the overall equation. Sounds like a long process, right? It kind of is. So the first step is to write the unbalanced equation in the ionic form. And below we have the equation that we're going to be practicing on. We have got sulfur in the solid form reacts with aqueous HNO3 producing SO2 gas, NO2 gas, and water. So um, the only thing S is a solid, not an ionic compound. Um, HNO3 aqueous, that guy is an ionic compound. And NO3 has a one minus charge, H has a one plus charge. SO2 covalent compound, NO covalent compound, H2O liquid water. So the only thing that's gonna separate really is the HNO3. So we're gonna have sulfur plus H1 plus plus NO3 one minus produces SO2 plus NO plus H2O. Okay, so there is our unbalanced equation in ionic form, step one. Step two is that to identify and separate the oxidation and reduction processes. To do that, we need to identify who was oxidized and who was reduced. So let's go ahead and assign oxidation numbers so we can figure that out. Sulfur is a lone atom, so his oxidation number is zero. Then we have H1+, plus, which is an ion, which means his oxidation number is the same as this charge, so the oxidation number for hydrogen ion is plus one. Okay, next we have nitrate, which is a polyatomic ion, and we do need to take into account the charge. However, we still need to assign oxidation numbers to each of the individual atoms in the polyatomic ion. So, oxygen, Oxidation numbers are always minus two. Um, there are three oxygens, so we have minus two, minus two, minus two, which means we have an overall oxidation number of minus six. So you would think that nitrogen would be plus six to make that whole thing zero. However, this guy's got a charge, which means we need to have a uh, we have to have an, an extra negative charge, so we will make nitrogen plus 5. Plus 5 minus 6 gives us a minus 1. Okay, so nitrogen is plus 5. 
And now let's move to the product side. So if we move on to SO2, the O in SO2 is, the oxidation number is minus 2, as is always the case for oxygen. There are two of them, which means the overall, it would be in the minus 4, which means sulfur must be plus 4. Okay, NO, the oxygen again, minus 2, which makes the, ox the nitrogen plus 2. If we go on to H2O, we have a plus 1 for hydrogen and a minus 2 for oxygen. All right. Now let's figure out who is oxidized, keeping in mind that oxidation means it'll it have an increase in oxidation number, meaning it lost electrons. So it looks like sulfur is has an oxidation number of zero on the reactant side and plus four on the product side. So sulfur was oxidized. And who was reduced, keeping in mind that when something is reduced, there is a decrease in oxidation number um, because electrons were gained. And that looks like nitrogen went from a plus 5 to a plus 2, so the nitrogen was reduced. Now we're going to split this into two half reactions only writing the, the atoms and compounds involved in the oxidation and reduction process. So for the oxidation half reaction, we're going to have sulfur going to SO2. And for the reduction half reaction, we have NO3, 1 minus, going to NO. Now we have our two half reactions. Okay, now we're going to balance the atoms in the half reaction. Remember, this guy came into four steps, so let's see what we're supposed to do first. First, we're going to balance all of the elements except hydrogen and oxygen. So on the oxidation half, we have S and S, same on both sides. Reduction half, we have 1N and 1N, same on both sides, so we don't have to do anything there. Okay, let's do step B and C together. So we're going to balance the oxygens using water and balance the hydrogens using H1+, or hydrogen ion. On the oxidation portion of the reaction, we have two oxygens on the, react on the product side. So we need to add water to the reactant side, which is H2O. And that only gives us one oxygen, so we need to add two H2Os. And that will be added to our sulfur with SO2 still on the other side. Now, however, we have, to, we have hydrogens on the reactant side, so we need to add hydrogens to the product side. And we add hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions, or 1 plus, H1 plus, sorry, um, and there are four hydrogens on the reactant side, so we need four hydrogen ions on the product side. Now we have equal numbers of sulfurs, oxygen, and hydrogens on both sides of the equation. On to the reducing half of our equation. So ends are again good on both sides of the reaction. And while it's true that we have oxygens on both sides of the reaction, we have three on the reactant side and only one on the product side, so we need to add some waters to the product side. So we have NO3 producing NO, and then we need water to make up some extra oxygens. So now we have two oxygens on the product side, However, we need three oxygens, so let's put a two there. Um, now we have three oxygens on both sides of the equation. Next, we need to fix the hydrogens. Um, we now have four hydrogens on the react product side, so we need to add four hydrogen ions. We need to add four hydrogen ions to the reactant side. Now, 
both, both halves of our equation have the same number of atoms on both sides of the reactions. All right, we're almost done with the balancing the atoms in the half reaction step. We have one more thing to do, and that is to balance the charges using electrons. So let's do that starting with the oxidation side. Um, and you'll notice that the reactant side, there are no charges. So the product side, we have a, we have four H1 pluses, which means we have a four plus charge, which means to neutralize that out, we need to have a four minus charge as well. So to do that, we're going to add four electrons. On the reduction half of the reaction, note that all the charges on the, are on the reactant side. So let's see, we have, for the H1+, plus, we have four positive charges. We have four pluses. We also have the nitrate, which has a one negative charge. So we're going to need to add three more negative charge, which we will do by adding three electrons to the reactant side. And there are no charges on the product side. And we are finally done with the balancing the atoms in the half reaction step. Okay, we now need to make the number of electrons equal in both of the half reactions. So it looks like for our oxidation reaction we have four electrons and for the reduction portion of the reaction we have three electrons. So to make that equal if we multiply the oxidation reaction by 3 and the reduction portion of the reaction by 4, we would end up with a total of 12 electrons. So let's do that. We're going to multiply this whole portion of the reaction by 3 and this whole portion of the reaction by 4. Okay, so starting with the oxidation portion of the reaction, we now will have 6 waters because 3 times 2 is 6 and we'll have 3 sulfurs we will have 3 SO2s and 12 hydrogens and 12 electrons and for the reduction portion of the reaction 4 times 3, we will have 12 electrons. And 4 times 4, we will have 16 hydrogen ions. And we will have 4 nitrates, 4 NO2s, and 8 waters. We are very close to completing this problem. The last step is to add the balanced half reactions back together to show the overall equations. So let's start by putting the reactants together. So I'm going to have 6H2O plus 3 sulfurs plus 12 electrons plus 16 hydrogen ions plus 4 nitrates. And next let's do the product side. So we're going to have 3 SO2s and 12 hydrogens and 12 electrons and 4 NOs and 8 waters. Okay, now we can get rid of or reduce things that are on both sides of the equation. So if we start with water, we'll note that we have water on both the reactant and product side. Six, six on the reactant, eight on the product side. So we can get rid of the six on the reactant side 
and take the difference on the product side, so we will now end up with two waters on the product side. Um, any other redundancies? Okay, it looks like we have hydrogen ions on both the product and the reactant side with 16 on the reactant side, 12 on the product side, so we can get rid of the hydrogen ions on the product side and take the difference. We're going to have four hydrogen ions on the reactant side. We can also cross out our electrons and there seems to be no other redundancies. All right, let's write this equation one more time, leaving off everything we crossed out. So um, our, on our reactant side, we are going to have 3s plus 4 hydrogen ions plus 4 nitrate ions. And on the product side, we're going to have 3 SO2s and 4 NOs and 2 waters. Okay, note that we have 4 H1 pluses and 4 NO3 1 minuses. We can hook those up, make them neutral because 4Hs hook up perfectly with 4NO3s. So final, final equation, 3S plus 4HNO3 produces 3SO2s plus 4NOs plus 2H2Os, and there is our final balanced redox reaction. We did it! All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.